so welcome students uh, to motivation online classes so today we are going to study the second part of control and coordination chapter 7 of science in crt class 10 so the second part which is there a topic is there in the science textbook that is what happens in reflex action so before understanding what happens in reflex actions we will try to understand what is a reflex action so reflex action is a quick action or an involuntary action so quick actions maybe you have understood a very fast movement and involuntary actions are those actions which we do or which happens unknowingly like say for example the blinking of an eye like say for example when you touch a hot object you lift your hand very soon without thinking it so these are known as involuntary actions so next we have the concept that is known as stimulus so what is stimulus stimulus is something which uh, which uh, which a sense or which uh, give uh, a sense to respond to that let us take an example you are walking on a straight path suddenly a snake came on your path so what you will do you will either run from that path or you will change the directions uh, in which you are walking or you will fight with that snake so the stimulus is given here by the snake and the response is that you are changing the directions or you are fighting with the snake so that's the response so now we are going to study here the thing that is how the reflex actions happen okay so now whenever you touch any hot object let it be a candle then what will happen in your hand there will be a receptor because the entire nervous system is made up of a single unit that is known as neuron many neuron combines to form the nervous system so in one neuron there will be different types of receptor in the eye there will be a uh, optic receptor in your uh, uh, in your tongue there will be a gustatory receptor olfactory receptor so on in the hand there will be a neuron neuron is a single nerve cell and in neuron what will happen there will be a receptor receptor will sense the changing environment because you know that in the hand there will be skin and skin is a sense organ so the skin is sensing the change in the environment and the signal is taken through this uh, sensory neuron so this is what this is the sensory neuron sensory neuron is taking the signal and it is reaching the spinal cord and what is very interesting about the spinal cord is that spinal cord is inside the vertebral column where all the nerve or the neurons get connected there so here what happened in the spinal cord is that the two types of neurons are connected there with the help of the new relay neuron and one type is the sensory neuron is connected here in the spinal cord and also the motor neuron also is connected here in the spinal cord so what will happen the signal is taken through the sensory neuron that is the the signal that is the change in the environment or the sensation of the heat is taken through the sensory neuron and it is uh, uh, reaching to the spinal cord and in the uh, in the spinal cord what will happen the relay neuron so this is the relay neuron this is the relay neuron the relay neuron is making connections with the motor neuron and after processing this signal what will happen after the processing of this signal this signal will be sent back to the motor neuron to the affected muscle and what is affected muscle affected muscles are those part of the muscle which will affect according to the signal which is processed in the spinal cord whether to like contract or expand the muscle will contract or expand and what will happen our hand will move and we are now able to pull our hand back so this is how it is done so remember the sensory neuron carries the signal from the external environment the change in the external environment and relay neuron makes the connections between the sensory neuron and the motor neuron and what will happen in the spinal cord the processing will take place and this after the processing the thing that to that is to be done will be sent back uh, the signal will be sent back to the motor neuron and the affected muscle will act according to the signal that is sent to the motor neuron so this is how we pull our hand very quickly maybe you might be confused about uh, the signal is sent to the brain for the processing how it is said that it is in the spinal cord this is not a complex thinking process this is a reflex action a quick actions you have to like uh, do these actions very quickly if you think that my hand is burning uh, if I just uh, I have to slowly remove I have to remove my hand now in if you think in that way then what will happen that will take a long time and that thinking take place in your brain so as uh, and so if you think in that process what will happen the signal will be sent to the brain and at that time your hand will get burned and look here as you have studied there is a concept called circle geometrical figure but if the circle is half then this is known as what arc so here is the same thing the signal is taken here through the sensory neuron and it is connected to the relay neuron and again the signal is brought back and it comes to the motor neuron and here it ends but it is not making a connections or a circular thing 
so this is just a part of a circle so that's the reason it is also known as what reflex arc a reflex means sudden or unknowingly we have done that actions and arc is formed for the transmission of the signal so this is known as what reflex action what happened in reflex action so in reflex action signal will be transmitted through the reflex arc and we respond to it to the changing environment this is it the concept so next we have the human brain so in the human brain we have the peripheral nervous system we are going to study this one and also about the central nervous system we are going to study and inside the central nervous system we have the brain and the spinal cord so these are the concepts we will study so now what is peripheral nervous system so peripheral nervous system is a nervous system which makes the connections between the central nervous system and the body parts here that is the uh, peripheral nervous system pns and this is the corneal nerves which is arising from the brain because uh, this is what this is cns brain is a uh, cns and also the spinal cord that is also a cns central nervous system so now look here peripheral nervous system is making the connections so look here this is the brain so the brain which is a central nervous system is connected with the spinal cord this is the spinal cord by the peripheral nervous system and also the peripheral nervous system makes the connections between the central nervous system and the body so as you know the spinal cord is a central nervous system and this here the central nervous system is arising here in the spinal cord and this this uh, spinal cord will be connected or the central nervous system will be connected to the body via this uh, pns that is known as peripheral nervous system so any arrow which is given here these are the peripheral nervous system so the peripheral nervous system is making the connections between the spinal cord and the body and also the brain and the spinal cord and as in the text it is given this peripheral nervous system makes the communications between the central nervous system and the uh, central nervous system and the body so now we are going to study entirely about the human brain so the human brain is divided into three parts that is the forebrain the midbrain and also the hind brain hind brain so we have the three part of the brain that is the forebrain the midbrain and the hind brain so in the forebrain you will see in the diagram in the textbook that in the forebrain it consists the cerebrum the forebrain is made up of cerebrum and cerebrum is the largest part of the brain and uh, the functions of this forebrain is that it processes thinking so all the complex processes like uh, not the involuntary actions okay voluntary actions which we which we do willingly all these actions will be processed in the cerebrum and it integrate different senses let us take an example i am uh, going to test lemon okay my different sense organ will be activated the nose which is the olfactory receptor will get activated and i can smell and after that also when i taste it when i eat it uh, the gustatory receptor get activated and also the skin i am feeling what is the roughness or the smoothness of that lemon so skin is also activated so here is the involvement of different type of senses and that all the senses go to the brain and there all these senses which is coming from the different sense organ integrate there and after it integrate different senses and after integration integration of these senses i will make an image my brain will make an image or uh, that uh, the lemon is uh, sour in taste its smell is somewhat like this and the size is uh, something the color is green also so all these integrations or different senses take place in the cerebrum so next we have the midbrain so the midbrain consists of the hypothalamus and the pituitary gland so this is the part of the midbrain the function is to process all the involuntary actions so actions like blood pressure vomiting salvations all these are done here so the blood pressure cannot be controlled by you it is not a voluntary actions it is an involuntary actions as you know that and vomiting cannot be controlled by you and salvations whenever you see any food then what will happen salvations comes automatically you cannot have a control on that salvations so these are all involuntary actions and these involuntary actions is actions processes take place in this midbrain so the next we are going to study about the hind brain so this is the third part of the brain and the hind brain consists of the pons medulla and cerebellum so these are the different parts of the brain which comes under the hind brain so the functions of the hind brain is that it does involuntary actions along with the voluntary actions so like all the involuntary actions is also processed in the hind brain and next we have the functions the next functions of the hind brain is precision 
Precision means like say for example if you are going to pick up anything small object then the size of your object will be like say for example if you are going to pick up this marker the size of your hand is becoming smaller and when you are going to pick up this duster the size of the hand adjusted to that uh, size of that object so that's known as precision so precision processing is also done in the hind brain or voluntary actions and walking and also the uh, and also the processes like walking in a straight line so whenever a person is uh, under the influence of chemicals let it be alcohol let it be drugs then that person is unable to walk in a straight line because the cerebellum is not working properly or the hind brain is not working properly so that's the thing so walking in a straight line maintaining the posture of the body is also because of the hind brain so these are the functions and these are the different parts of the hind brain so uh, the portion which i have taught you is very like uh, it's uh, the basic of the class 10 and it is taught exactly according to the science textbook i have not gone beyond that so that's it thank you